Hello, hello. So today it's going to be a quick little theory video so we can better understand how planes fly. So I'm going to talk about four forces which are constantly acting on a plane during level flight. And we'll take a look at how all of these forces interact with each other. So let's look at our plane here and let's look at the four forces and what they do. So beginning with one that we're all familiar with, the first force is lift. So lift is what essentially causes the plane to rise up into the air. The more lift that's being generated, the faster the plane will climb upwards. The next force is opposite to lift, and that's weight or gravity, which is trying to pull the plane back down towards the ground. The third force is what we get from the engines, and that is thrust. This is what propels the plane forward through the air. And then working opposite or against thrust, we have drag, or you could also call it wind resistance, where the friction of the air passing over the plane is trying to slow it down. So to achieve level flight, all of these forces need to be balanced. And balancing these forces is actually very simple. All you need to do is make sure that the plane is flying at a constant speed, and then these forces will balance out. Now there's a couple of ways that we can influence these forces which will affect how the plane will fly. Let's have a look at thrust first. So obviously thrust is controlled by your throttle, but if we change the throttle inputs or the thrust while flying, how does it affect the other forces? Let's have a look at this in action. Okay, so here we are in the plane. Uh, we're currently at 2000 feet. We're traveling at about 95 knots and we've got our engine speed at uh, 2200 RPM. So what we're going to do just now is just simply increase the throttle to full and let's see what happens. Look at the nose, you see it's rising there? And now we're gaining altitude. Pretty interesting. Okay, let's reset and then see what happens when I reduce the throttle. Okay, so here we are back in the same situation, and let's see what happens when I reduce the throttle. And you see that the nose dips down. So let's go back and have a look at the four forces and actually work out what's going on here and why the plane is behaving the way it does. So what's happening when we increase the thrust? Well, the plane is simply beginning to speed up. Now, as it speeds up, that means the air is passing over the wings faster, which means that more lift is generated. So the combination of these two forces means that the plane will speed up and begin to climb. Now, when we reduce the throttle, as you may have already guessed, the opposite happens. The amount of thrust is less than the amount of drag being generated, so the plane begins to slow down. And as it slows down, less lift is produced and the plane begins to descend. Now, one other way to influence these forces is to alter the pitch of the aircraft. So imagine that we pitch up slightly and make no other changes to any other controls. What forces do you think will be affected? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. So in this situation, the lift and the drag forces are increased. As the plane pitches up, this increases the amount of lift that the wings produce. However, this also creates more aerodynamic drag, which will in turn slow the plane down. Now, if you go in the opposite direction and pitch the aircraft down, the only change that will occur is that less lift will be produced initially. However, afterwards, you'll start to gain speed, which will generate more lift again, strangely, which does lead me nicely into the final points I want to make in this video. So a lot of aircraft nowadays are built with something called inherent stability in mind. Now what on earth does that mean? Well basically it means that the plane will naturally always try to return to straight and level flight, even if the pilot is making no inputs on the controls whatsoever. So this involves designing the plane in a certain way which is kind of complicated but basically, the plane is manufactured so they will always try to find a state where these four forces are always perfectly balanced. So hopefully that gave you guys a little more aviation knowledge. In my next video, I'm going to be looking at planning in IFR flights, which involves a lot of the same things we had in VFR planning. However, we'll look in more detail at getting a route sorted as we'll need to fly along airways. And I might also throw in some other instrument procedures as well. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you later.